important. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. let's kick it off. East. Um, sorry, I was on mute. I think I said hi, but I was muted the entire time. Um, so hi, me and Nicole were, I think the last time that we spoke, um, where did we leave off? Was it the user flow, Nicole? Yeah, I think it was the user flow. And then there was one week we spent like focusing on that one, um, the Corona Y Insights stock, just to like flesh out like the features list and uh, things like that. Um, and then this week we focused on the sitemap, which we used the Google Docs to like inform that sitemap. So, but yeah, our last conversation was on the user flows. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So yeah, the last time we spoke, we went over the user flow and then I think, I know this works differently depending on like timeline and other constraints, but we felt like we had the time to like take a step back and really think about everything that we learned. Um, so we did that and that was why we didn't meet last week because it was basically just for like Nicole and I to be on the same page, um, which I think that we are now. Um, there was... Oh, cool. And then Nicole, do you have the the link? Oh, I think I have it right here for the doc. We shared it before, but I'll pop it in here really quick. Um, cool. So we did that and we, do you want to share a little bit about it, Nicole? Yeah, sure. Uh, actually, I'm just going to, I'll share my screen so I see. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Okay. So... Okay, and you guys can see my screen, right, of the Google Doc. Yep. All right, cool. Yeah, so like this um, last week was just a chance for me and Kayla to get like take a step back and get on the same page so that make sure like we have like everything we need to move forward. Um, uh, let's see, we put like things like, you know, we outlined the problem statement, epidemiologists are having typically lo with locating relevant articles, conducting research and aggregating data for COVID-19 is time consuming because it is difficult to locate the most relevant articles. Um, yeah, so we set on this, we had a proposed solutions hypothesis, like um, it corresponds to the problem statement and we outlined our research insights. So things like building search queries and aggregating information is a complex time consuming process. It's difficult to determine if a given keyword that appears in the paper fits the purpose of the user's investigation. Um, there's a lack of tools to help expand the user's empirical knowledge on which keywords to read or not. And also epidemiologists emphasize the part of the use of abstracts. Um, like as they're like searching for papers. Um, and then of course we went over the user personas to keep, uh, make sure they were keeping track of the goals and um, illustrations of the goals and the workflow of our targeted user. Uh, we went over like the competitive like analysis uh, and also like the insights that we were like that we drew like from um, uh, going through like the different like other tools like Mendeley and PubMed and iris.ai and uh, Docker Evidence. And these are like the different insights that we took from there. Um, let's see. Yeah, and these are like just different points that we like extracted from like looking into like all these different tools just to, just to help us like move forward because we can like refer to those as we're uh, moving forward with the user flows and like the features list. Um, and of course, like our last conversation was based on the user flows. So we had this very, we had this like comprehensive uh, um, Diagram of, like, our, of the current user flow of like how a, a current like a epidemiologist currently like goes through like the whole uh, process, um, and then we had the edited uh, improved like uh, user flow for like how Corona Y can possibly like solve like the user dilemmas that were in the original like flow, and so we talked about that, and then from there we like extracted like various insights. Uh, yeah, like for example, like users currently rely on mesh to formulate their search strings. This is a trial and error process. Um, and then there's like, I think Kayla came up with this, I think it was like resonated like a lot, like for me personally, like the greatest point of friction is when the user must restart their search within with different filters because their initial query had results that may have been unrelated to their topic or related to their topic, but had unrelated uh, metadata. So yeah, so we talked about like these uh, various insights, like based on like the user flows we did. And from there we came up with a features list and we divided it into um, well, it was divided in like in the user flows, um, like what is it? like the pre-search phase and then so the search phase and the post-search phase. So uh, as we were doing the features list, we also divided into like based on like those corresponding phases. Um, and I believe um, some of you actually took a look at it and uh, made some comments. 
Um, so this is what we have right now. So pre-search phase, we have like mess search builder, recommended terms and search entry. Um, this one I think was tabled, like, or it was optional, or we're, we're not gonna focus on the scale, like the visualization, but we just put this for, you know, just in case. Um, of course, search, search entry bar and uh, metadata filters. For the search phase, we have like a, um, uh, basically this is like a view of the abstract. I think, say, uh, I think we, Kayla and I like settled on um, something similar to like what Mendeley does. Like if you were to click on uh, one of the papers in the search results, like there's a sidebar on the right that shows up and it shows like a view of the abstract. Just, just so like the user doesn't have to like constantly like switch between like different um, pages. Like if they were to click on this and it shows them a full view of like the abstract and they had to go back, at least with here you can see the abstract and the search results at the same time. Um, there's that. Metadata filters beside the search results, tags, to highlight important info in the abstract, uh, save to repository folder option. I think there's like one I particularly wanted to like talk about. Um, I think, oh yeah, so for the post search phase, um, so we had this originally, I think um, Arthur, you made a comment like we're not allowed to display full PDFs to do constraints of how the data set was released by medical journals um, regarding like this whole this feature that we came up with like in browser PDF viewer. I think uh, Kayla suggested, had a suggestion where maybe it's like a full text viewer. And I think we had a question like, is, if this is possible, instead of having like a, a, a tool. Yeah, to like and actually the we had this idea earlier uh, this, um, this summer about exposing just a part of the, of the text that is relevant to the search instead of mm -hmm. displaying the full uh, body, just because, um, just to give you guys a quick uh, context on this, the CORD-19 data set, the, the one that has all the scientific literature on the coronavirus, it was released um, by multiple medical journals in um, collaboration with Allen Institute for AI. And they basically um, released it based on the agreement that no one will be publishing um, this information to be fully um, viewed as, you know, for it, for basically any researcher to, to navigate all of these papers, because obviously this is the part of their business model as a medical journal, they have paywalls and, uh, all things attached to that. So we were thinking about working around that by not showcasing the full text, but chunks of it that are relevant to, um, to the current query, that's pretty much the, the maximum uh, what we can do. Okay. Yeah, I think we can take that into consideration then. Because I think um, we also like pointed out the capability to add notations, like annotations to, um, for users to make notes and annotations directly to like the text. So um, oh, yeah, uh, Kayla, what do you think about that? Like what Arthur just said? <clears throat> Mm, I have to think about it because I understand what you're explaining, um, but I just have to take a step back and understand where that, how and where it will fit um, visually. The reason being, I now have in my mind um, that when you click on a result, that there are multiple things on that next page with the specific result, so the title, the abstract, um, there's a multitude of things. We'll, hash it out more in the sitemap thing mm -hmm. um, that we created. But I'm wondering like, if secondary to the abstract and the tags that we spoke about the last time that serve as like highlighting the specific medical terms that are important, that the next like segment of that page would be just the parts of the paper that are relevant. Um, my question being how how do those parts of the paper like get pulled out in a smart enough way that you don't lose context and value for a reader? Am I making sense? Yeah. Does anyone have any ideas on, on this? I topic? mean, con context is definitely gonna be the part of the comprehension that we're gonna to have to allow for. Um, I mean, the way, only way I can see around it would be linking, once we've got to the point where we're displaying like maybe the abstract or the elements that are important. Um, then rather than linking to something that we're hosting so they can see the full published version, linking to the public spaces wherever 
that are hosting that if it's accessible so pubmed's repository or wherever that like if you actually like this seems like it's got important things to you then this is where you can find the actual copy of it for example but um without obviously having publishing rights we're gonna have to be really careful about copyright because otherwise we're gonna get in major trouble Um, sorry, something I just popped in the chat was that something that I've noticed that works well is when the keyword or the search string, the thing that you're searching for is highlighted in the abstract or in the paper itself, because it allows the user to have their attention specifically to the space, like the place in the paper where their um, term is mentioned. But the good thing about it is that you don't lose context. Um, and uh, I'm not sure what you think about this, but I feel like with certain things, um, it's important. Sorry, what? Oh, I just got so distracted from that, um, to going to a different page. Um, sometimes I think it's really important to try our best not to, like not to, cause I think right now we're in this dilemma of trying to pull as much information, like as much information, like, um that's like specific and granular enough but also high level at the same time so with that it's like it with the example that we have right now of like trying to cut specific parts of the paper my concern is that if we actually like reinvent the wheel in a way like take a feature that works well already that the users are used to that it may be overkill um, because I happen to think that it works well. I don't have user testing data or anything to like any metrics to support that idea that it works well. Um, but I think an educated guess um, that I can take is that that's like a-, a I mean, highlight, highlighting something that people are looking for is absolutely a fundamental important thing to try and do. Like I said, taking sections, I don't know. The problem is I don't know how um, flexible they're going to be on copyright and how much we can get away with like, well, you can see this much of it because you were searching for it or if that's going to be a problem or if anyone's even going to try and compete on it because, you know, we're, we're trying to facilitate dealing with a pandemic. You have to be a bit of a special kind of business asshole to go, you know what, these people who are volunteering to try and help, um, we, should, we should sue them because money. I think that's a not yeah I don't know I don't know if anyone's going to have the the inclination to do that but at the same time we need to make sure we don't run into that problem well, as long as we don't publish full uh, text and PDFs we should be fine um, I think uh, that's what, what... that's a big assumption to make Arthur. and I know it's coming from a place of like goodwill and decency but uh, we definitely need to have like some legal understanding of that because it might be fine like I say we, we could be just we could assume that the world's not full of assholes, but we could also find ourselves in a very, very hot water. Depends on like fair use, you know, if it's a fair use policy or if they even have a fair use policy for medical things, I don't know. Uh, we'd have to make sure we like, we covered on that front. We're not gonna get ourselves caught out. Well, I think we just need to, to show that we have a good faith effort in kind of following the fair use kind of case. So I think if we do, for example, I don't know, if we detect like a keyword or something and then just show, you know, two lines above and below that line in the text, just kind of like that window, I think you can argue that you already doing like fair use type of stuff. And just like that, like you don't, you, you, we're not trying to show everything. We're just showing like this piece for review purposes, right? It will be, here is piece of content and here is our kind of judge, no, not judgment, like this, this is what we do with the text extracting something. So we kind of showing that our purpose is just to demonstrate our tool and results of our tool, not the content itself and kind of profit from it or something. And then the rest will be, you know, lawyers will decide, not us. That makes more sense to me. And I don't know if this ties in at all, but maybe Nicole, if you recall, I feel like a few weeks ago, somebody mentioned something about this being an integration for existing 
um, existing websites. I don't know if that even solves the dilemma that we have, but if it ends Not up- Not really, because they, they don't really showcase the, the full text in the search. They let you download PDF if you have a, a subscription. Okay. So Nicole, can you go back to the um, PubMed page for a second? When you click on a result, um, I'm just, you'll have to forgive me. There are certain things I know very little about. Uh, when we're clicking on a view full text, what happens exactly? Is this just like, um, oh, so it brings you, right. Okay, okay, this, now I understand. So it brings you somewhere else. And then based on this specific um, page, you'll have and, to have like a subscription to access and, it. And, and, and as you can see, there is a, a lot of money in it. Got it. <laughs> yeah, $90 for one article for 24 hours. Okay, cool. So now just to clear the point of clarification I need is that there, there we would not have a download PDF button that's scratched and there would not there would be a link for like full PDF. So a link to the source of this publication be it the Mad Archive or Elsevier or any other publication. So this link would be linked out to. Okay, so there will be a link out button that I'll make note of because um, we put that in the sitemap, but it, I just need to, I think Nicole and I both have to understand exactly what it means. And that when you click on full text, it does not mean that you're linking to something and then actually having access to that article. So that's a good point of no, clarification. No. Yeah, mm -hmm. what it is, is within our data set, we have all the original files. They exist as files. So anyone who can get it, who can, who's got the tech wherewithal can go looking in it. But for anyone else who we're making their life easier, like epidemiologists, not AI specialists, um, they, they're going to, we're not going to make their life easier to steal copies of these PDFs, but we are going to be able to go, okay, you've now realized that this is useful because of, you've seen these tags that we've, you know, we've done all this filtering for you. And now if you definitely think that this is useful, you can go find it here. And most people who are working in epidemiology are going to have subscriptions to all of these kind of things already. It's not like an unusual thing for them. Correct. Either through the university or the agency they're working for, um, um, unless, you know, they're just like really, really independent. Actually, you know what, for simplicity's sake, so we have a mix of papers. Some of them are like public use. Some of them are like, you know, under this uh, paywalls. So we'll probably need to do like analysis just to see what is the ratio. And at this point, there are so many papers just in core 19 data sets that I think if we assume that uh, whatever we show is publicly accessible papers, we'll be in a good spot just in terms of volume of information to, to show the user. And then uh, that way we could, again, design the user flow, et cetera, you know, for something, how it's supposed to be, right? In science, for, all the knowledge the is science. open. Yeah. Right? For the, for, for, yeah. And then just tip the scales of this debacle of paywalled articles and not, we'll just add more to this publicly accessible science. So now next time the researcher will think about where to publish their papers, they'll be like, you know what, to, to write this paper, I was using this tool. And because of this, I was using like, you know, like I was able to find publicly accessible information better versus paywalled. So I would like to have more citations on my paper. And you know, this Corona White tool seems to be more like getting more and more popular these days. I need to be in a publicly accessible format to, to utilize that, <clears throat> et cetera. So I think we, sh we should do like this reason, like we, we need to do reasonable assumption regarding like these limitations, but they should always be tolerated towards open science and, you know, public. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm definitely on the board of like, if for making it accessible to be like I say visualize and read the ones that are publicly accessible, but we need to have a, a system to be able to 
oh, well, this one isn't publicly ac public accessible. We have to have a, a method of dealing with both sides of that. Because ideally, yeah, you want to be able to get through it and then open up the article with all the tags attached to it and then they can scan through and see what's important to them based on their searches and they should be able to look through the whole thing. That's where we want to be with open science. But we're not there, so we've still got to kind of deal with both camps. And to do that, we need to plan for the open stuff and also what do we do with the not open stuff and how can we give enough information to make sure someone knows they've got the right thing so then they can go source it from wherever it needs to be sourced legally because we don't want to get caught in a, a big old copyright trap. Okay, so all of that makes sense to me now. Um, so then my next question is, so then what would the consensus be on including a section of the article like Arthur had just uh, mentioned a moment ago? Um, that's like pertaining specifically to whatever it is that the person is searching for. Um, in addition to the abstract and the abstract having highlights and then tags. So we, I think hashed that out last time, but now we're trying to figure out, so we don't have a full text view. That was something that I think I totally misunderstood. Um, but now that I understand, that'll be like a button that does similarly to what PubMed already does and then what we're talking about now is whether we should have that additional text text section um, that just like is a brief segment of the article. So that I think I think when it comes to like we've talked about tags and filtering and, and summarizing, I think they should be just we should just decide or define on a tag that it'll be like or tag it as open science or public public science or whatever you want to you know whatever you licensing you want it that way someone can scan at it before they even click on it they know they're going to be able to access the whole thing or a tag that says what what licensing is attached to it so Elsevier if Elsevier owns it or you know whoever's published it and who's technically owning it and it's not part of the public sphere it should just have a tag system so we'd have like a little box that just says the license it and then that way even in the options we could have a filter saying so for people who are limited, who don't have access to Elsevier, but they do have access to something else, you could say, well, I want these ones because them ones I can't get to anyway right now. Or a way of going, I want to see them, but I know I'm not going to be able to open them or get access to them. So we need to like work out how to make that clear, like in the filtering system, probably. That's the way I see it. So does that suggestion mean that we shouldn't have an additional... Um... I'm just going to call it a text box, um, but it should, we should just rely on like those tags to like, let the user know the, like the, 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 like the most important aspects of that paper. Um, yeah, that's cause I'm, I'm thinking from a perspective of like, what visually are the most important items? Um, and I want to make sure that we hit everything. Maybe it's helpful actually with that question to go to the um, the I Figma think. file. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I changed a couple of things based on this conversation while we were talking so that it makes a little bit more sense. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay. You're gonna see me here, but I just need to look at it because there's certain things that I am now a little bit confused Okay. Um, actually, do you think you could zoom in just a tiny bit, Nicole, so they can see? Because I, yeah, sure. I can. cool. Um, we were. I think the last time we spoke, we definitely mentioned that we were just thinking about it in like three categories. So, what happens in pre-search? What happens in the actual search process? And what happens afterwards? So um, that's kind of where we are with that. And then. There's your entry point. This isn't wildly different from the user flow. The reason why we did this, this is like a, a way for us to really think about what are the most specific things that have to be, what are the most important things that have to be visualized on each page? Um, and it stems from the features list that we developed before. So that's kind of the process that we took. And then this is like the entry point. So the home and then there were three things at the beginning so here based on the conversations that we had previously i noticed and nicole and i both had this um, consensus i believe that people are currently using the mesh website i think 
um, to like create search strings or like have an idea of what terms to use um, specific to their subject matter. So we wanted um, to have something at the very beginning that allowed them to do to have like and or statements and stuff like that with the specific phrases and then be able to input that into the entry bar and then all of the filters. So these were the list of filters that we had come up with, um, but we also made a note that there might be more. So please, if there are things that we did not think of, definitely let me know. So right now it was study design location date range. So I think right now on the Corona Y, um, demo. This is called something else. It's like publication timeline, but that just means the same thing. Um, if you're fixed on it being called that, um, that's fine, but that's what it, the intention there was. And then yeah, pu public publication date kind of makes sense. Um, location is going to have to some, have some sort of granularity to it. It's going to have to be like, is someone looking at a country? Is someone looking at a continent? Is someone looking at a number of countries? We're going to have to work a way of making sure that like, because if someone's particularly researching cases in Japan versus cases in Germany with some metrics, like looking at only them two needs to be an option. So I don't know how we do that, but that's, we need to make sure we, and, it, and also it's like if it, granularity matters. So it could be like the United States or it could be like California or it could be LA County. Like all of them need to kind of, we need to be able to just work with any, any of them sort of geography, blank granularities. Mm, okay. I'm going to write that down. And in this moment, I can't say that I have an answer for exactly how that should be, I'm, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not providing answers. I'm more or less providing problems, but that's, that's all I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that makes sense. Um, I'll take a step back and think about that. Cool. Um, and then it was just age, sex, or I noticed on the demo that it's gender. Um, is there, I don't know. I know, of course, I think we all know now that in- I think sex, but yeah, sex is probably the better term because it's a biological thing. Okay, so cool. Um, gender is a much more social construct, which has much more complicated connotations. Sex right. is- Right, right. Thanks. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, so I think we'll keep it like that unless somebody else has a different idea that is more compelling, I suppose. But then please um, don't provide an option that says yes, please, because it's already been done. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the all metric score. So those were are the we gonna be Are we still going to be using all metrics? Because like no one's saying it's of any use, but we're like promoting the idea of it maybe being useful, but. Yeah, and there is a yeah. lot of con controversy uh, in terms of how they determine that that score. Yeah, the the weight on that seems to be like, I mean, I d it's still definitely the lowest priority thing there for me. Would you is, do you so is the idea that it should be cut, or is it something that should be kept? I mean, I don't really. Un I mean, as my understanding of our metrics is, it's some sort of social media metric of how much people are talking about it but it yeah. doesn't give you any value of the quality of what that talking is it could have been something that fucking went viral because of a reddit thread and a thousand people shared it and talked about it but they were all ridiculing the ridiculousness of it and there could be some really accurate piece of paper that somewhere that only three specialists have read but also agree that is absolutely wonderful research and one of them is going to be rated really highly and one of them is going to be rated really low low and it doesn't give you any indication of its quality yeah so it's we can just, keep it as it's just a, a it's a market. concept it's a concept idea right now, but I'm not saying it, I'm not saying scrap it. I'm just saying it seems to have some serious flaws that I would want to highlight. And I wouldn't want to add a confusing ranking system. What most people don't understand and pretend like it's got some sort of foolproof methodology behind it when we're trying to deal with science, which is yeah, all about methodology. Yeah, I would keep it as a marker on the actual list to you for each paper, but not on the, on the actual filters for people to start. The, the journey from yeah it might um, it might be because it's a little bit like um alt metrics is almost like the public perception of citations because citations is like specialists talking to each other and agreeing or specialists where one person's written about one thing and refers back to another thing like these are all like the science people they're specialists and the alt metrics is more like the public perception which has some value but we need to really work out how to describe that value and um 
and it needs to be quite clearly put across that a really high mount metric score doesn't mean it's good. It just could have gone viral. But at the same time, it's an idea that if this particular or five pieces of research are being talked about a lot, it might be a good piece of paper because lots of people are talking about it. So it's it's it needs some sort of clarification about what it does and how it let's works. Let's simplify so, it. Let's let's remove it from the the actual filters. So would it? So just so I'm understanding this correctly, would it be? Would this be something like not included in the actual filters, but more so like in the uh, details the of, the, of the paper? Or like in, yeah, it, 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 it'd be so it'd be it'd be useful as somewhat as a tag as a, as against someone can go oh well this paper's been talked about a lot and it's only a month old so it's either going viral or lots of specialists are talking about it and then both of them things it gives something as a reference point but I don't think we should put too much weight on like how a, how high a score is because like I said a brand new paper is going to have a terrible score and that's not necessarily means it's bad. Um, I moved it down. I'm going to relabel it. Um, numbering with sitemaps is super annoying. I wish we didn't do it, but it just is. <laughs> um, um, okay, I took it out. I'm, ma I'm making notes on the side that are maybe not coherent to other people, <laughs> um, but I, I wrote that down. That makes sense. And then I slid that down to later in the <clears throat> later in the flow. Okay, cool. So we hashed that out and then recommended, wait, what's going on? Okay, cool. So we stopped here, metadata filters. And then once you um, do like run a search before that, there should be like recommended terms like in that search entry. So things that are pertaining to like, I don't know if- And, this this, be and that's gonna be pulling from, I'm assuming mesh ontologies. So mesh is, medical subject headings and the idea is it is like a thesaurus so if someone's putting in the search bar you know a couple of things the recommended search terms would probably be automatically picked would be like like we've talked about with like hydro hydrochloroquine <laughs> it, it's got like a medical term it's got a chemical term it's got something else it's got like five or six different professional terms and all of them should have automatically be picked and pulled in as kind of like building a mesh search so is we try and i think the idea is to try and speed you, you can use the mesh search if you want to do it manually but we're trying to make mesh a little bit more automatic as well by pulling things in so if somebody types a thing in they should pull all in automatically pull in all the known synonyms for it and all the obvious ones and then bring up optional ones that are like oh well the, they might be also talking about cardiac and heart disease so let's put them together but not not assume heart disease if someone's right because heart cardio just means heart doesn't necessarily mean disease so you'd want to prioritize these are definitely connected terms. We should just auto click them in a UX sense. Like this is unless someone wants to unclick it, but these should definitely be picked. And then the other things should be like, these are connected terms or similar, similar branching ideas. And then that can go into the search result to refine it. That's the way I'm seeing it. I mean, if anybody else has got any ideas, shout. Uh, that makes sense to me. Um, so like this recommended search terms would probably be connected to this mesh search builder. If I was going to like logically connect it, it would be pulling from the mesh search builder or it would be using the mesh search builder as the, as a facilitation of making people understand the extra terms yeah, that are pulled in. It's easier to treat it as like, we have a set of medical vocabularies that have different terms. And whenever people uh, type things in into a search bar, we're basically uh, populating the things that are um, searched within these medical vocabularies, and we're showcasing re recommended terms for those from those medical vocabularies. Okay, cool. Um, that makes sense to me. Um, yeah, and, and the reason why I mentioned UX in that sense is. I would auto take the most clearly obvious connected ones as in like auto select these four or five and these ones are optionals. You can obviously at that point unselect them if you, if the researcher has realized that that term is not useful in this context, but that's making their life easier is the most sensible way for me. It's like auto selecting the terms that are the most obvious and then giving them optional ones beyond that. 
Okay, cool. So where do you think auto selecting would happen? Would that happen when you're like entering a search or would that happen in like the preliminary phase when you're trying to get those terms? I think if you taught, if you wrote, wrote a term in, um, I'd probably just have maybe a box underneath it. And when you wrote a term in, it like add a, a selection of terms that were automatically connected to it. Like you could have a, like the main search part and then like you could even have a box underneath it just saying connected terms. And as you type words in, it adds all the collect connected terms and then around it would be optional ones that you could select and add into it. Kind of like colored boxes or tick boxes. I don't know. Um, the way I'm, way I'm picturing it right now is like, uh, I'd have to probably draw it out to get a better idea, but um, I would have it where there's a, a range of words next to them in little bubbles and you could color them to con you could color them connected to the original word. So you typed a word in, it'd get given a color, and then it'd color the same connected words that are somewhat, somewhat connected. And the more times, the more words you add, the more of these colored words you get mixed into it. And then by the end of it, you end with a, a, a reasonably long string of your main words and a secondary string of all the ontology connected words automatically selected with other ones that are somewhat tangentially connected. That's my crazy brain way of thinking through it, but I don't know if no, that's, that's the best really way of doing helpful. it. That's actually very but helpful. I'm not, um, I'm not saying it's the best way to do it, but that's the only way I can imagine it right now in my head. <laughs> if, you're, yeah, if, cool. if at any point you're able to like draw it, like I think it would be really helpful just because I'm a visual person. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm, I, from I'm what kind it of sounds... a bit of both. Yeah, I'll have to probably plan out something just to sort of, this is what I think it should look like. I'll, I'll find some space on one of your boards and make some notes mental visual notes. Mm -hmm. And we also, this is the good thing about having this recorded. So I'll, I'll like um, go back and re-listen and then um, we can cross compare what I visualize from that and then go from there. But that's helpful, that makes sense. Um, I think that that's simple enough. Uh, how, okay, cool. Um, cool, cool. So, that happens and then you go to the then you get your search results and then when you get your search results that page should should include um the titles of those papers and their respective abstracts the tags that we discussed before the mesh terms that are associated with those papers i think that makes sense and then the filters would be i we had talked about it like it was it would be a panel on the side in the event that you want to alter something um, because maybe you were too specific or you were not specific enough. And then the last thing would, what was this again? Like if you click on something that the abstract would come on. Or you, or you hover it. over it or something like, like um, PubMed does when you click on it and you pops up to the side so you can see it. Yes, but the thing now that I'm confused about, Nicole, is those are two interactions now. So if you click on the, when does this happen? This would happen when you click on a on a article because what's the, it seems redundant. It's like you get the abstract on the side, but then you also have the, yeah, help me out here, I'm confused. I, mean, yeah. I, I think in that sense, it's probably a case of the abstracts would be like just the beginning of the abstract. Whereas, um, because yes. you see we've got here, they're not full abstracts. Sometimes they're just like the first bit of an abstract. Whereas when you click on an actual paper, you'll end up with the full abstract, which could be a, a couple of paragraphs long. You know, yeah. like basically there's, th that's more like a summary than an abstract. And then you click on it and you see that the abstract is much longer with more details, a couple of paragraphs long. So it's more like title and summary and then hover or click for abstract. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be on the right sidebar. It can just collapse uh, and expand the the that summary view. You can pop in and out. Yeah, I'm I'm not the person working out how to make this happen. I'm just throwing out ideas. I've spent the last mm -hmm. few months uh, doing comparison stuff on on flight search systems, so it's not the same thing. But there's lots of ideas that have come out from that. Okay, cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. I do think though. I'm gonna have to spend more time with it, Nicole and everybody, just because this is like confusing me only because you have this on the side, but then there's also, I just need to understand what happened, like <coughs> what you do and what you see. 
because you click on something and then that interaction signals that you're going to see the abstract in some way, whether it's a side panel or what have you. And then there's another, um, like right after this, when you click on the specific paper, you go to a different page that would include all of this information. So I'm trying to understand what specific interaction leads to this. What do you think? Yeah, because there's two, because mm. you're sort of seeing it as two stages, aren't you? I mean, I can sort of see it. Because um, you click on, you click. So it's like, if you're clicking on something, you can't have like two different things happen. So I'm trying yeah. to, I Which know- Which is why I sort of said, if you hover over it, it'd pop up. And then, mm. But then again, that's hovers a little bit. It's not great for reading because if you obviously if you move away from it, it goes away. It depends on if you click and the first click takes you to abstract and then there's something within that to take you through to the, the full page side of it. So um, it'd be, yes. imagine like clicking on that when you get to that information and then and then you'd have something underneath it saying open, full, you know, fully open or something within the pop-up that you get i don't know but you'd have to have like a second click to take you through to the full page with all the summary and all the or that's even if it's that needs to happen i don't know because like i said it depends on if we have if it pops out to the right like that you could scroll through it and then there might be just a full screen option in there that you can basically take over the search but the search is actually in the background and doesn't go anywhere i don't know i'm not i'm not a developer i don't know how hard that is <laughs> <laughs> probably really okay. hard. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, Nicole, do you think you could take over for one second? Because my computer is going to die um, and I don't want to like leave the meeting. So oh, we yeah, no worries. pause that. Um, we're at that the paper section. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll consider that. I think that makes sense. Um, let's see. Yeah. So like once you click on the paper section, like we're just basically well, essentially like similar to like what we have here for PubMed. Sorry. So we have a different like um, specific like details regarding like the each paper the, like a paper so we have like the abstract the metadata associated in citations um similar articles and of course like this tag system um and it, like we have the alt metric store that we score that we move from like the filters like over here uh the full text link so i mean in regards to like our conversation earlier regarding like having access to like the full text like maybe we need to like fix this or maybe we don't but we'll consider that um for the mesh terms well, we, in the full text link basically we could technically host or work out how to host anything that's in the open source open data side of things but i'm not sure how um how demanding that would be on like literally web server mm -hmm. like overheads i'm not sure if we've got enough funding to be able to run like as a full download service and a full upload service, or it's a case of we just link them to the place where it is publicly available on the internet, which I'm assuming it is in its own space. So it's a case of like, if you definitely want this, this is where it is. Or if can we work out how to pull from there and then put all our tags over the top of it. So we're kind of not having to do all the technical burden of hosting everything and delivering everything to everyone who turns up. I'm still kind of curious. I'm not sure where we are on that side of um, if we're going to be integrating with somebody else's system or if we're going to be trying to build his own thing. That's still kind of a question right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, go on. Sorry. I was just saying that that made sense. Yeah, no, that makes sense. To me. Okay, cool. So, okay, so these are basically the details for like each individual paper. And then we have the option to save to a repository or folder. So, if epidemiologists they wanted to you know collect all like the papers that they deem relevant to them they would be able to like save into like some sort of folder yeah, kind and of a collection maybe even collection and, and attached to the search function that got the collection to work mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay. yeah and then from there you would move like to what we call like a post search phase so from the repository or like, your collection of papers you have the list of gathered papers um and once you like click on a specific paper so Basically, so once you click on a specific paper, we have like each of these like different um, um, details for like each specific paper. So the abstract metadata, the full text link, and the citations. And then we have the option to like add notations, like if the user wanted to like add notes, um, like their own notes to like each paper. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm not sure if there's like any other questions I had for this. Um, 
Can can we just mention briefly about that share question that we had? Because currently, I think on PubMed oh, okay. and maybe other places as well, I'm not sure, there's this ability to share. Um, right. And they give these kinds of options, like a link or Twitter or Facebook or whatever the case is. But how important is that? Is that a priority item at all? Yeah, like this little portion right here. So right now you have the option to like share like uh, Twitter or Facebook or like just a, um, a link, a permanent link to the this page. I don't know if um, sharing specific articles is something we want to be, again, facilitating because we're not necessarily going to be hosting. There might be a case of this is where, again, if it's on PubMed, this is the link to PubMed. Um, I think and, sharing makes sense from the perspective of groups of articles, which is what yeah, we which is yeah, we're action. making our like personalized collections of like, oh, we, well, I've collected these twenty things together under these kind of search terms. And when we do save it, ideally it's saving it with the search that got them there as well. Mostly so they can share it as a link to other people, but they can understand the search that got them to that collection. Um, so yeah, the, here's, the, here's the 15 articles that are interesting in this context, because I am researching these things with these like filters. And, and if we could save that that way, and if it was some way of like making that a shareable thing, so a researcher can send to their research team going, this is the this is the collection, this is the search terms, rather than having to, you know, send a just a, a website link that we that means we'd have to have like persistent website links, which is asking for a complexity. So if we can work out work out a way of going like this is a collection, this is how we've labeled it and named it, and now other people can read that, read and see that collection, and ideally some public way of storing these collections on our site, so other researchers can bump into other people's collections and popular collections could be seen or something like that. These are again concepts. I don't know if we're going to any know any of these sort of ideas, but that's the thoughts I have. Okay, um, sorry, I'm sliding things around, but I'm gonna put it here and I think, so um, <clears throat> I think the last time we talked, we went through like a chart as well. And I just wanted to just briefly mention now what we'll do moving forward. So after this, I think we'll be like positioned very well to actually visualize things. Finally, it's taken some time um, of like getting really well acquainted with um, all of the angles here. So I think now we'll, we'll go from this site map and all of the things that we did our best to itemize and then go into wireframes and we'll think about the things that we discussed today and see the best way to implement them. Um, and I think the next time that we talk, we'll probably, um, we'll be approaching like, uh, more specific questions about the interface itself. So yeah, I think that this was, um, very helpful for me because before a lot of it was like abstract um and i feel like we're finally getting we're all it. we're all we're all abstractly thinking about it and the only the, the disadvantage is i've just i don't put enough effort in and rest of my time to come and dig through this and and sometimes the most effective way for me to think about my thoughts is literally people ask and say things and i just empty my head and these are my thoughts and this is what i think i don't have to be right or wrong but i'm willing to put my ideas out so if you ever need to just soundboard off of someone i'm happy i'm always happy to do the talking side of it or or listening to some of your thoughts or some of your queries and some of your ideas i'm always mm -hmm. happy to do it. i'm just i'm i'm really bad at like sitting down and writing writing down my thoughts for lack of a better word but if you ask me questions i'll give you my first thought and what I've, where i've come from on that place so or, or i have no fucking idea <laughs> i'm always happy to, i'm willing to always say that too but i'm yeah I yeah, think cool. it's spending quite a bit of time percolating on how search systems work, especially to do with flights. It's not the same thing, but I'm I'm really analyzing a lot of that moment for a coursework and kind of in a place where tags and searching is kind of one of the things I'm thinking about more than I should. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, it makes sense. So that makes sense to me. I think now we'll, that'll be the next step. So we'll meet again next. What's the day today? Today is Thursday. We'll meet again next Thursday and we'll have like visual examples. Um, we have, um, Nicole and I actually realized that in the 
the previous wireframe document that Yuan had worked on, right. that there were multiple pages there. Um, and this was like, was this one part of it or were there other, <coughs> excuse me, were there other things here? Hold on, let me check this out. Um, oh, cool, yeah, so she has a bunch of stuff above this as well, but we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work in this same document. I will share the link, I think. Um, Actually, most of you. Yeah, I think we've. Yeah, it's, it's. I think that one's within the Trello and probably Notion spaces. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna work from this because some of the things that we've talked about are um, visualized. Already exist. Um, yeah. In some way. So the most, the quickest way and the most efficient way is to work from this and then modify, um, and then like just archive or table if you know what I mean to just table. Yeah, just. Well, it's best to just, even if old ideas, it's best to just store them as like old ideas because just because it's an old idea, it don't mean it might not get used later on or as a concept. It's not like these things sure. are really limited by space, so you could just put them in a box <laughs> in the corner going, concepts we tried. Yes. So a lot of the work that she, I don't know if it's most of it, Nicole, but a good chunk of it, I feel like, was her really doing her best to try to visualize like the the graphic part of it, like it being um, like a, she calls it a node graph, like similar to the line example. Yeah. So we'll put that away because we said that we wouldn't do that right away, but there's some good stuff that I think is valuable with what you showed at first, yeah, over here. Mm -hmm. um, or even below that. Oh, actually those are really similar or the one all the way at the bottom, sorry. Um, but that's that makes sense. So we'll go from there. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I think that that's that covers um, where we are right now. So we, but it's got like right now we're seeing this like uh, box, which will be like the abstract name, title, whatever it is, and then mentioned item, mentioned item. Are we going to be just assuming that under there would be kind of like search terms that are relevant that have been searched, and maybe, maybe. something underneath that would be like mesh terms connected to or. Or we'd have like again some sort of uh, tag system based on the geography or that sort of that metadata we talked about. Mm -hmm. I think it encompasses all of those things. And mentioned item is like a, mm, just a just a general term for it. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. And there will be like differences when when we like really flesh it out. The, it'll be clear what the differences are between like tags, metadata, and mesh terms. Um, I think that's the three. But yes, I think uh, this cool. is a, a good way to visualize the layout, and then we'll get into it and make it more a little bit more like. Yeah, first wireframes are with low 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 resolution, and as the ideas build, will become more refined as we go along. Mm -hmm. Um, I forgot what I was gonna make a note of. Okay. Oh, got it. Okay, cool. So yeah, uh, I think I'm all clear. Does anybody else have any like? pressing questions or concerns or Nicole, was there something you wanted to mention? I think this was helpful. I think the only uh, thing that I I would encourage uh, us to think more about is this uh, sharing of the collections, which I think would be a useful, uh, nice to have feature uh, instead of just sharing one individual article. Um, but other than that, I'm looking forward to, to check out the wireframes next week. Cool. Yeah, I will mark that down. I, I think that's a good, that's important as well. So those like lists could be shared. That's cool. <coughs> All right. Sounds great. Thanks, everyone. Sounds Thanks, like everybody. we're making some good progress. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye, bye. Bye. Guys. Thanks.